Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for uh, coming today. I know there's only one of you here that's not my coworker, but uh, we're going to get started anyway, and we'll just record this um, for posterity so that in case anybody else uh, wants to view this online, you can. So my name is Joe Amditas. I'm the Assistant Director of Products and Events here at the Center for Cooperative Media at Montclair State University. And uh, the reason we're doing this today is we recently started doing a meeting format where each staff member at our team meetings shares some things that they're interested in or working on or just something useful or, or interesting. And <clears throat> my topic was um, a lot of the tools that I've been collecting and using and testing out over the eight years that I've been at the center, um, I've been ga uh, cataloging them on the website that is uh, linked from the Eventbrite as well as in the chat right now. It's our little useful links and websites page. And I realized that I have so many tools there that, you know, I've been collecting and not many people might not know about them, right? Many people might not know about them. So I figured I would just share with the team and apparently um, they found a lot of them useful just like I did. So I decided that I would uh, put together, we decided that I would put together a pretty loose and casual uh, session here for you all to, uh, to, for me to share them with you all as well. So what the way this is gonna work is, um, I'm just gonna sort of go through these, hi Carla. I'm just gonna sort of go through these um, one at a time. It's a resource roundup. This is not gonna be an in-depth look at any one particular tool. Um, I'm gonna go through all of the different tools that I um, have on my list here. And then you can stop me at any time. You can ask me questions. You can um, you know, recommend things in the chat. Um, it's gonna be, like I said, really casual. So. Um, if I'm going too fast, please let me know as well, but all of these links will be shared with you. All the tools will be shared with you. I'm creating an Airtable database uh, with all the stuff that I have here so that you can peruse at your own leisure. Um, so off the bat, like, I guess let's just sort of get started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen and we'll start by looking at the uh, useful links and websites. Um, page that I was talking about. If you go to the Center for Cooperative Media's website, centerforcooperativemedia.org, um, you will find that down here, if you scroll down, we have a item here that says resources and tools. Now this is a deep page structure. There's a bunch of stuff that we've put on here. I highly recommend checking out our reporting guides. Um, we've also listed several um, uh, toolkits or guides from other from outside um, entities. But if you scroll way down here, which I guess I should probably move this up, you get to the bottom here and it says useful links and tools. And that's where we're gonna start our little journey today. Um, this is, uh, like I said, I'm looking, I'm, I'm working to transform or, um, you know, turn this into something a little bit more accessible, both from a, a disability perspective and also from just like the sortability, um, something in tagging them. You can see right here, I'm already starting to build the Airtable database so that I can, you know, let you know whether or not I think they're neat, give you a short description of what they do, the genre or type of tool that it is, whether it costs money, whether it costs money with a free account and then a paid freemium account, or whether it's just a paid resource. So I hope to uh, finish that at some point this week and I'll share that with you once it's done. But if you look through the page, you'll notice that it's a completely arbitrarily organized, but it does have a bunch of different um, topics and then several links to uh, resources that are there. So. Um, I'm going to go through some of the ones that I have here. And before we start, I also just want to let you know um, about a really great newsletter or resource, resource that I um, open every single time. It's called Wonder Tools by uh, Jeremy Kaplan. Jeremy Kaplan is one of my professors at CUNY at the grad school of journalism there. And this newsletter on Substack is just fantastic. Jeremy knows more about tools than I do, um, and I'm always learning from him. So I, I urge you to go and subscribe to Wonder Tools on Substack. Um, you will not be disappointed. So right off the bat, um, we'll just get started. The first one I wanna show you, some of you may know this one, some of you may not, but this is a sleeper. This is one of the most like powerful um, suite of tools that are made available for free um, and they've been around for years. Since I started at the center eight years ago, I've been using tools like this. Um, let's see, let's go to our projects page here. This is the Night Lab at Northwestern University. And they develop all these little storytelling tools. Um, some of my favorites are Juxtapose, which is just easy. You can do the little slider that goes back and forth to show the differences between two photos. Great for climate change stories, development stories, any kind of story that shows, uh, uh, that likes to do a compare and contrast between changes. Um, the next one is timeline.js. This one is incredibly powerful because it allows you to bring in a bunch of different elements from the web or from graphics uh, and other media that you have on your computer and create an embeddable, easy to use and navigate and understand interactive timeline. And the only thing you need to know how to do is use my, uh, Google Sheets. So they've also even included a, a template here that you can download and use. Um, boom, you can click on this button, you get a copy of the, the Google uh, 
spreadsheet that they use and all you have to do is fill in the information as it's labeled here and they have a couple of examples to show you what that would look like. Um, I, incredibly simple. Like I said, I've been using this since like 2014 before I knew how to do any of this kind of stuff really. And if you'll excuse my computer, it's uh, it's not having a good day today. Uh, it's very slow and especially if I'm running Zoom. But yeah, so I would highly recommend checking out Timeline Day at JS. I don't even have to tell you all the things that it could be useful for because they have A, they have examples of how other organizations have used it and B, it's a timeline. You get it. Um, you can drag this down here and you can go into all the different entries. You can set um, ranges for each entry. It doesn't have to just be a single point. Absolutely banger tool. I uh, highly recommend. Um, I would also recommend just sort of going through the rest of these. Storyline is very similar, easy to show. Um, you know, uh, data, I'd say better more than data than story points here. Um, I'm not sure if you can think of an example where we might need to track the uh, change in numbers of, I don't know, case rates or anything that might come to mind. But this is a great tool that allows you to have a little informational block as you go through the different items on the timeline and show the little discrepancies in the in the numbers. Um, another one, just anything on this page. And then there's some of the more like experimental ones. Sound site is one where it allows you to embed an audio file in text, which is really neat. So if you have quotes, you can highlight them, upload an audio file, and the person can click on the on the quote and hear the actual direct quote. Um, then again, they have these, I don't actually know too much about these here. Um, this one seems most interesting to me, especially for larger mid-sized newsrooms um, where they, I think, I'm pretty sure they just, they use uh, environmental data sensors physically placed around a, a geographic area to um, consolidate the data. Um, and again, scroll down, there's incredible amount of work that these folks have put into the, uh, to this, um, this, this, this collection, this repository, uh, all of it free, by the way. Um, so that's Night Media Lab. Right off, right off the bat, if you did nothing else but go and mess around with Night Media Lab or Night Lab, um, you, would be, you would be better off uh, coming out of this uh, session here. Um, okay, so let me just go ahead and close this. <clears throat> I just want to real quick, I'll, again, I'm going to drop these, uh, these, this list here in the chat. I'm going to share this as a web page here. Uh, one of the tools that I use all the time, and we might as well just talk about that one, is OneTab. So if you haven't heard of OneTab, OneTab is for all you uh, crazy kids out there who cannot seem to close your tabs. This allows you to not close your tabs, but also not, yes, I see you, Carla, but also um, not lose them. So or, or also not have them taken up all of your RAM on Chrome, uh, but you don't lose them. It's like a temporary bookmark keeper. And if you open the one tab link that I sent you, you'll see, excuse the dark mode, you'll see that all of the links for today uh, have been organized here. And I'll just show you really quickly what that, uh, what that does. And I hope this doesn't, um, I hope this doesn't, crash the computer. Ready for this? I'm going to click the one tab. It's a browser extension. And all of these tabs are going to be simultaneously moved into a new segment. OK, it stopped the screen share because it did this. I'll show you here. Now it looks like this. So now I have all 22 of these tabs in order here. And these are the ones that I had before. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and restore all of those. We might lose the screen share again. That's going to take a little bit of a drag on my computer. But we're going to, we're going to lose the screen share for a second. And um, you're going to see that now those are gone, but if you lock them, they don't go anywhere. But again, this just allows you to take all the tabs that are on your screen at the moment and slide them all into one list that you can share as a web page. Um, you can name them, you can star them, and you can lock them so you don't accidentally delete them. Um, and every time you click on one, if it's not locked, the uh, it'll disappear from this list and go up into your browser. Um, you can also control click or command click, and uh, it won't disappear, but it'll still load. OK, so I think these tabs are almost done loading. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change my screen share real quick back to our original window so we can get back to it. Free free tool, one tab, highly recommend it. Ch reduces the memory load or the, the, you know, the, the load on your RAM astronomically, like it says here. Um, highly check it out, one-tab.com. And it's also linked in the one tab that I sent you. Um, the other one here uh, that I want to get to is before we even before you do anything else, if you don't have uBlock Origin installed on your computer, um, this is a night and day difference. Now, I make this uh, the reason why I like this one is two reasons. Mo any any um, ad blocker uh, will allow you to whitelist sites. Um, which is important to do. I would whitelist all the local news sites, all the local news partners for the center. I would never block their ads. Um, but if you are going to be going to a site which has an inordinate amount of uh, in, uh, unseemly ads, let's just look at what that looks like compared to what it looks like uh, with uBlock on. Let's just see here. 
or actually do I have like multiple, I think I have ghostery going as well. Let me just, let me just turn that off as well. I have multiple ad blockers going on, but uBlock is one of the most consistently um, useful um, ad blockers I've ever found. And it also has this little dropper tool. So if a, a website is being, I think, what is it? The New Republic is really annoying. Let me try it. E, I think it is. New Republic has like these banners that sometimes come up at the bottom and it's incredibly annoying. Let's drop the ad blocker and see what it looks like. Uh, and you can use the little dropper when it's on to select an individual element and, and uh, get rid of that element. So if you have a banner that's really annoying you and it's getting in your way, what you can do is turn this on, it'll block most of the ads anyway. And then you can take this little dropper and say, I don't wanna see this anymore. And just hit click, click it and then click, click create and boom, it's gone. You can do the same thing over and over again to remove entire elements from the website and make a much cleaner experience. It's just, it, like I said, best, hands down, best ad blocker, most effective that I've ever used. Um, and I would highly recommend that you install. It's a little Chrome extension. It also works on Firefox as well. I don't know about Safari, but um, it's one of the most, it was one of the more popular, um, but it, uh, or it's becoming more popular lately. Okay, again, anyone feel free to unmute and stop me if you have questions or pop it in the chat. I can. I should be able to see the chat even though I'm screen sharing. So um, the next one, IFTT, um, and it's paired nicely with uh, its uh, more robust cousin Zapier, but we'll start with IFTT. Um, it's, a, it's a freemium app, so you can do a certain number of commands. And what it does is it, it ties certain actions or apps to other actions or apps. So what do I mean? For instance, um, I find it very annoying walking through campus uh, because the Wi-Fi, when I'm trying on my phone, because the Wi-Fi uh, networks are distributed and I'm constantly connecting to multiple Wi-Fi networks and disconnecting and connecting. So I like to just like leave my Wi-Fi off when I get to, when I when I'm walking to campus, but when I get to work, sometimes I forgot to I forget to turn it back on again when I get to my office. So I've set up if this then that with my phone to automatically turn on my Wi-Fi and turn it off again whenever I enter or leave my office. So as I'm or or when I get back to my house, same thing. So if you ever get home, you forget to turn your Wi-Fi you're using data. If this then that will automatically know, hey, you're here. I'm turning on the Wi-Fi. It can also do things like track, uh, you know, Wi-Fi networks that you connect to. If you're for security, if you're worried about, um, you know, accidentally connecting to suspicious networks, you can set it up with Google Sheets so that every time your phone connects to a Wi-Fi uh, network, it logs it in a Google spreadsheet. And I've actually had that be going since I think 2016 when when Jeremy Kaplan first told me about this uh, program. It's an app for the App Store in and Google Play, and you can um, you can integrate it with all kinds of things. I don't just mean like physical things like that. I wonder if there's a let me see. Let's explore real quick, and I'll show you the types of things, uh, the little productivity applets that they have. Those are tend to be my favorite. Um, you can send a message every day to Microsoft Teams. You can send a message every day to Slack. Automatically post reminders. Um, Oh, somebody unmuting? Yeah. Hey, Joe. Uh, sure. Hi, it's Sarah. Um, is this so it's not a plug in, it's an app? It's an app. Yeah, you download okay. it on your phone, you set it up to, and you connect it with your other apps, and it'll do things uh, for you as you set, uh, as you see fit. So it runs all the time in the background, or how does that work? Yeah, it'll be triggered by certain events. So it, depending Sorry. on what oh, you set it. up, yeah. So it'll, like, for, for instance, some of them will. Uh, sync to your Google Calendar. And when the Google Calendar has an event coming up, it, uh, if this, then that will, for instance, like trigger um, an, a, an email that you set or a, a text message that you've set up or um, a, any kind of notification that you would like that's not standard for your phone or something. You know what cool. I'm saying? Yep. Thanks. It also connects to Siri and Google Assistant. Um, and it could do all kinds of really fun things here. And I, I, I would recommend just digging in and doing the explore tab here and seeing what kind of little tracking things that they have to offer. Um, yeah, so here you go. You can even track when there's a tweet by a specific person. You can send a notification to an app like Discord or Slack or, or an email. Um, I like uh, Simon, my friend Simon used to use it. Uh, his mother used to call him relentlessly every night if he didn't text by 6 p.m. So he would just have it send a text to his mother. Uh, hey mom, just checking in at 5.58. Uh, every uh, you know every evening kind of a thing, not exactly productive for news, but you could uh, you could see how those kinds of things could be useful. Um, the bigger, stronger, more robust cousin of if this then that, which I use to on a, an, a, an insanely regular basis, and it saved me just so far this uh, this month for the last three weeks, it saved me 1,356 tasks that I didn't that I would have otherwise had to do manually. This is called Zapier, and it allows you to uh, automate and really just power 
so many different aspects of your news workflow or your production workflow without having to know any coding. The most you would have to know to do some of this stuff is, uh, is going to be some HTML, um, which is you know totally fine. One of the things I like to use it for uh, all the time is to connection between, uh, to build our newsletter in the mornings or during the day now, because I don't like to get up and do that that early anymore. Um, I use the combination of the Airtable Web Clipper to automatically add websites or news stories to um, an Airtable database which then automatically through Zapier, once that story or whatever comes into the Airtable database and I get to choose the type of, um, you know, the, the, the tags that I want to put on it. It's an NJ.com story about housing or whatever. Um, Zapier takes that and says, okay, um, based on what you put in there, I'm going to go ahead and generate a Google Sheets uh, um, entry here with the parameters that you've set up so that you automatically have HTML created, uh, fully formatted newsletter content, uh, link and story, link and story, as you can see here. Um, and we've been doing that for a while. I've been doing that for a couple of weeks now, and it's been great. And there are just too many, too many, truly too many different things that you can do with uh, Zapier for me to even get into them now. Uh, it would take a master's uh, uh, degree to really understand everything you can do here. And the good news is you don't need to know anything about technology for the most part. You know. Um, to use it, but if you are a power user and you do know a lot of stuff, you know how to you know write code or you know how to speak to um, you know computers in a way that they understand. Um, it just becomes exponentially more powerful for you and saves you a lot of time. There's a free there's free you get up to five zaps um, with a free account, um, and you can pay progressively more for more functionality. It does not say that it's illegal for you to create a second uh, account free account to up that to ten, but we won't get into that. <clears throat> Um, okay, this one is really interesting, and I haven't played around with it too much. I got this from Jeremy Kaplan. This is called craft.do, and this is going to more, more towards the multimedia style uh, stuff. So this is a really interesting, it's freemium again. It's a really interesting way to create like engaging visual um, guides or pamphlets or like collections of information. So if you want to build something that is, is flashy or looks good but is easy to do, um, this will allow you uh, to create these little collections. And Jeremy Kaplan uses it for book lists. Um, he, it, it allows you to create these sort of digital folders that act as repositories of their own that you can use to display different kinds of informations, uh, information and resources uh, to the public. Um, Jeremy had this one here that I just had up before. Um, and it's his teaching kit. So you click these things and this slides over. You have these little tabs here that you can click and the information that you have in these little things slides on and you can put all kinds of info in there for people to use. All these are linkable. Um, they have little sections and you can close that. And it just becomes a really nice little way to display your information um, that I, I'm actually looking to try out, but I haven't yet. Um, next, uh, you want to send a encrypted note, one that self-destructs. This is super basic, free, self-destructing encrypted notes that you can send to people. This is a private note. It's called privnote.com. It's a private note. Uh, do not share it. This is my password, right? Say you want to do you know, a password and you want to send it, but you don't want to send it over email. You're worried. You type it in here, click create note, and it creates a link here. The, the note will self-destruct after reading it. So if you, you copy the link and you send it to someone, right? They post it here, they open it. You're about to destroy the note with ID this. Yes, show me the note. They get to see the note once. And once it's done, it's gone. So you can't even refresh the page. Oops, can't even refresh the page because it goes right back to prove note. Really cool, really useful, super easy. I just have it as a bookmark. Um, like I said, instant privacy. Okay, we're about 25 minutes in and I have been talking and my mouth is dry. So I'm gonna pause real quick and I'm gonna uh, you know, just hear reflections. Anybody see anything that they like? Um, any questions about the tools, use cases or anything? Everything I see, I like so far. Yes, good, glad to hear it. Yeah, this is all so useful. I just feel like it would take really long time to learn. So that's that's the good thing. A lot of these actually yeah. are super easy to learn. In fact, they're more set it and forget it kind of a stuff, which I like the best. So like one tab is super easy and super effective for, and I'm gonna get into another one right after this that is for researchers and for people who like, like to collect a lot of bits of information from around the internet um, and have trouble sort of storing them or keeping them in, in focus for, for projects. Um, but yeah, I, I try to find ones that are set it and forget it. So like if this, then that is a godsend because it's super like just, 
it asks you, what would you like to, for this to do? And it gives you a thing, click it. And then the next thing is like, and what would you like to happen when this, when this uh, occurs? Boom. And then once you set that up, you don't have to pay attention to it at all, except to check it every once in a while to make sure you get the info. I'm going to use this recording and learn one at a time. Perfect. Yeah, I would <laughs> I, honestly, I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you a, a giant list of all these. So you can click through one at a time if, uh, if you find it easier that way. Carla, did you have something other than, okay. Yeah, good plan, Sarah. Um, I like the, um, what is it, the JS uh, timeline tool? Oh, so cool. Yeah. I like just getting in there and playing around with it. You know, even for like a family thing, you can do that. You get the family photos, you go on a trip, you do the storyline, story timeline, and you, you know, you have a record of uh, a family uh, thing that you can, you know, either record yourself going through and create a little video, or you can show it at your next family PowerPoint meeting that everyone does, I'm sure. So yeah, really good stuff. Um, okay, if nobody else has any questions, I'll go ahead and uh, continue on. All right, back to it. Okay, so um, the next one we're going to talk about is called hypothesis. This is so cool for me, especially any time that I want to or have to give a presentation or I have to go on a radio show interview or I have to talk some stuff. Uh, I have to talk about some stuff that um, I know, but I want to make sure I have all the information here. It is called Hypothesis, and it is a browser extension um, that you can activate on any web page. Let's just go to the New York Times real quick. And it'll, it'll allow you to not only um, not only will it allow you to um, annotate text on any web page, similar to like inline comments on Medium. Um, it will allow you to um, highlight, uh, leave notes, and see other people, uh, other people's thing, uh, other people's comments. Give me one second. I just want to log in here. Whew. Okay, so watch this. Let's see. We got the depressing, depressing, depressing. All these are all live links. Doesn't matter. All right, I'm going to click the the hypothesis button, the the tab here. And already it should appear on the side if I'm logged in. If not, I'll have to log in for a second. You click this button and there, you see this tab appear? It comes up on the side here. I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. And this will allow me to see any annotations I've left around the web, but anything I highlight now automatically comes up here and I can annotate it. So if I wanna talk about Western officials about Russia's victory day, I can leave a little annotation here. It says uh, important, uh, you know, important, God, I can't spell, important date for Russia. Right, and I can leave comments, I can leave photos, tag this, and then I can post to public or only me. So I'm just gonna post this here and I can click on it and it'll bring me right back to that on the page. So if you have a big document, say you wanted to go and talk about what it means for Elon Musk be buying Twitter and what does that mean? And say somebody asked you to talk about that and you didn't actually know what you were talking about, but you had a bunch of tabs open. This will allow you to quickly sift through that information that you've highlighted and sound like you know what you're talking about, which is the essence of uh, broadcast media. So, um, Really cool tool, Hypothesis. It's hypothesis.is. I'm gonna. It's in the. Um, it's in the the one tab that I'm gonna send you all. So don't worry about remembering that. But that's a great one for me, and it's very. I find it very useful. Um, let's say next. Speaking of of annotating and highlighting, we'll talk about Tango. I just recently discovered this one, and it is one of my all, all, like one of the most game changer tools for onboarding and process documentation. So even the most basic tasks and you know tool or, uh, and procedures can be daunting for someone who's never used a particular app or who doesn't understand your organization's workflow. So what you can do with Tango is, and they're about to come out with a um, desktop app, but right now this allows you to, in a web browser, record the steps that you take to do something and create very easy to understand step-by-step -step workflows that are visual. So let's take this, um, let's take this one that says how to, create the daily, actually, no, that's super complicated, hold on. Uh, let's say how to enable social cards in MailChimp, right? This is something that a lot of people forget to do when they're using MailChimp. Um, and uh, it ends up making your links look bad on the uh, on social media. So what if you need someone to, if you need to teach someone how to do this, you create these steps by using the little app, the little plug in here, and you just do the task and it'll automatically create screenshots and step by step instructions on what you clicked, what pages you went to, what you typed in, and as you can see here, it walks you through how to click on all campaigns, click on all emails, find the preview, and you can edit all this, you can upload your own screenshots, but it automatically captures and then zooms in on the part that um, is relevant to what you clicked. So you can obviously see how this would be useful in really quickly generating these steps uh, for someone and then having documentation on board or on, on file for when you have new employees or when you wanna train someone on a new app or process. 
Um, this is, I, I, I found this from the uh, News Product Alliance Summit um, a couple weeks back and I was blown away. It's so simple, it's so easy, it's fantastic. Um, we're not gonna do jitter. Uh, the last two that I'll do, uh, cause I'm gonna wrap up and I'll just send you the links after this. Last two that I'm gonna do um, are GreenShot and Padlet. We'll start with GreenShot cause we we're just doing screenshots. This is a program you can download. It's an app um, for your computer that allows you to take screenshots and then um, do a variety of different uh, things with them. So I'm gonna hit print screen. I, I don't know, I, I mean, let me share my desktop when I'm doing this. I don't know if you'll be able to see. I'll change the share to my full desktop here. Um, and you can let me know if you can see this or not, um, but you should be able to see a little crosshairs. Do you see the crosshairs? Probably not. Oh, you do, okay, cool. So what I'm, I'm gonna take a screenshot with GreenShot and this, this menu opens up here and you can automatically, you can either copy the screenshot to your clipboard, automatically open it in an editor, save as, you can rename it or using predetermined output settings, automatically save it to like downloads or a screenshot folder. But then even better is if you wanna have a link to it, you can do the upload to Imgur or Imgur button here. And it's automatically uploaded to a web, ho uh, a photo hosting site that you can have a link copied to your clipboard instantly. So if you want to send it to someone via text or something where you can't copy an, or attach an entire photo, you can instantly have a photo. So I'll do it again just so you can see here. Boom. Screenshot, upload to Im Imgur, open a new tab, and instantly I have it already copied to my clipboard. I hit enter and there it is. Okay, Imgur is um, purely for um, image hosting and uploading. It's free, completely free. Um, and it turned, it's like, it's, it's kind of like a social media site. It's a garbage website. Don't go on it, uh, just use it. Don't, you don't need to browse it. You could just use it as a repository for throwaway, throwaway stuff that you don't want to clog up your computer uh, or your hard drive, I should say. Free, you can also donate to them because it is free and open source. Um, Padlet, okay, Padlet, I haven't actually, I've used Padlet for a couple of years now, and I've never actually even dug into what all the stuff that you can do with it. It's it, it's a mind mapping tool. It's an organizational, you know, thought organizational tool. It's a multimedia production tool, an interactive media production tool. Um, it is a um, productivity uh, tool as well. It goes. It it, it it has a lot of functions. Is what I'm saying. Um, let's see. I think I'm a Google login here. I don't even have a paid account, and I've been using it for years. I think this is the right account. Yes. Okay. So what we use it for is something called our asks and offers board at um, our conferences. We like to use it as a digital billboard or um, bulletin board where anybody, including anonymous users without signing in, that's, that's very crucial. You do not have to sign. You can set it up so you don't, people don't have to sign in to comment or contribute. And it'll allow you to create, it creates this interactive board here where you can drag stuff around and anybody can leave uh, post comments and, and information here. Uh, all different kinds of files, all different kinds of, uh, of information. You can just style and design them in a bunch of different ways, change the color of the posts, um, share the posts. Um, you can organize your boards in a bunch of different ways. There's all kinds of settings here that you can use to customize it, including custom links and URL slugs. You can change the way people react to the posts, whether it's voting, rating, or liking. Um, you can require logins, it can be more secure, you can require a password, and it really just, and you can also comment as well. So it really acts as a really nice digital version of what would usually be like a bulletin board or, or a, a, a table that you're all sitting around. And it's asynchronous communication, so it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be online at the same time as the other people, they can just come in here and leave a comment and say, hey, this sucks. Uh, or hey, this is great. And you can do it anonymously or you can require them to log in uh, depending on the type of environment that you're using it for. That's Padlet. But this is, like I said, this is but one use of this. There are other um, there are other Padlet types that you can use. Everything from the timeline, which allows you to obviously visually display uh, a series of events in order, in linear order, a map. You have the canvas, which is sort of like a Miro or Jamboard kind of a thing. You have your shelf, which is a stacked uh, Kanban style. Um, information like a Trello board would be, right? So you have these little columns here that you can use to display visual information. Uh, your standard stream or feed, you know, basically just like an embeddable or, or shareable website. Obviously a map is a map, but it looks neat. It's pretty cool. They have a bunch of different designs and styles that you can use. Um, and uh, all of this is free up to three Padlets. So once you hit your third Padlet, you either have to get rid of the previous one or upgrade. So um, I don't think it's too expensive, actually. I don't even really know. I haven't looked, but um, I don't think it's too expensive. 
for for this, but I, it's it's very powerful. Okay, yeah, nine dollars, ten dollars a month for unlimited pad, uh, at platinum, six ninety nine a month for twenty padlets with hundred megabyte uploads. So not not prohibitive, uh, but the free part is three padlets. So I just use the free one. Um, let's see. I think I want to say that's it. There's a bunch more on the useful websites one. Oh yeah, shit. Okay, sorry. This one, one two three apps. These tools. They're so simple. I, when I say simple, just look at the PDF tools. How many times have you wanted to convert something into a PDF from a PDF? How many times have you wanted to merge two PDFs or split them? You have a bunch of different docs that need to be one. You got to open up Adobe. You don't have Adobe. It's a pain in the ass. Super easy tool. Just pick the, the PDFs from your screen or from your, your computer. Uh, upload them to this thing real quick and it'll and it'll merge them together. Where Let's see, here is a shadow of Liberty and a press release. Uh, here's a, an invoice and a press release. And I just wanna merge them together. So I upload them, PDFs have been merged, download them, there they are. I open it up and they, they're one file now, one PDF, boom, amazing. Really, really useful. It seems super simple uh, and you know maybe trivial, but it is absolutely not. You can also do things like protect them, automatically add page numbers to our existing ones convert all different kinds of files, including images and Word documents into PDFs and back again. But that's just the PDF stuff. And uh, you have an audio file you wanna trim. You don't have Premiere or, or Audacity. Do all these kinds of things. You need to take an image and you need to shrink it because it's too large. You need to compress it. Boom, free image converter and compressor. Um, I, everything, I mean, I, I swear, the one, two, three apps is incredible. It's a, a huge repository of these free tools that I highly re recommend that you use. Just scroll through these and 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 keep this bookmarked because that anytime you're thinking, oh damn, I have to open this you know heavy program or whatever. Nope, pop over to one two three apps.com. Bob's your uncle. You're good. Okay, I think that's I, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, go to the useful tools. Go to centerforcooperativemedia.org/useful and it'll bring up the useful links and websites uh, page. Like I said, I'm going to add this to Airtable and make it a little more comprehensive with more information and, and stuff, and maybe even alphabetized or organized, but you can sort them by you know type of tool. For now, I just have like a little star emoji on ones that I thought were really neat or useful. Things like the voice recorder, um, Craig chat, which is a cool thing for Discord, we won't get into. Emojipedia, maybe you don't know about this, but Stephanie and I use this all the time. You can copy and paste any emoji, you can search for them, um, and then just copy them right here, see all the different types, click copy and it's in your clipboard. If you don't have that on your computer or if you're not you know, sure which emoji you wanna use, it's just super simple, especially if you're using them in a newsletter or in any kind of other thing, uh, situation like that. Or you just wanna be really annoying on Twitter or whatever, it's up to you. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty much the, the pack. There's so, so, so many more, uh, so many more. <laughs> so please uh, take some time to just look through that page and, uh, and knock yourself out. Uh, Jeff said, so please add the shared sites, which are not on the reference page to the road. Yes, yes. You're talking about the one tab one, the one that I, uh, the one I shared in the chat. You're talking about this one here? Yeah, there were a couple. I mean, Tango's not in there, I don't think, but awesome tools. Yeah, Tango's not add. Yeah, exactly. Oh, shoot. Before I leave you guys, uh, one, two, two, like, incredible links here. The, uh, it's in the one tab, shared tabs that I just sent. The Kaplan Digital Toolkit 2017 and 18, those are packed full of Jeremy Kaplan's recommendations for those years. Most of them hold up um, and are still relevant. I would, I would go through those Google Docs. Um, here's 2017, here's 2018. Um, I think he stopped doing them in 2018. I gotta bug him to do an updated version of this because it's so useful. Sarah just says it once. Well, I don't know if I want to bore everyone with this, but I just tried to um, do the plugin for one, two, three apps. And it says that I can't do it because I need my administrator access. Is that because it's the Montclair State? Are you trying to install something for them? You should just be able to. You should just be able to use the um, the web-based one. At, oh, okay. When I opened it for the first time, it said like install for Chrome. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. You don't want to don't do that. Don't do that. that. Oh, okay. uh, Chrome just does that sometimes. It, like you can install, which basically just means it like saves the the book. It bookmarks it basically. Oh. And okay. so you don't have to have it like in a Chrome window. Yeah, that's it's really annoying. I don't know why they do that. But no, just go to one two three apps dot com and use the web the browser based tools. Carla, did you you're unmuted? Did you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I just, this doesn't have to do with apps, but this has to do with equipment. Are you yeah. guys, are you guys familiar with center cam? No. Um, it's, it's, it's for all of us in this zooming age where, um, 
you know how when when you're on a zoom you either look at the camera and can't see the faces or you look at the oh. faces there's a there's a new camera that oh i have it, heard it of this. dangles down to the middle of your screen and so it's called so center cam they started out as an indiegogo but they now have a a website center cam and it does it does That's do so what it says it does and it's like a hundred and some bucks i think but there might be a discount if you order multiple so I, i'm i'm just That's gonna so toss, i'm just gonna toss that out and then the other thing is i'm i just ordered this because i'm going to a wedding and uh, I'm going to try it out, but it's a 360 degree video camera that I'm oh, yeah. going to mess with. And That's so, so um, I'll report back if I have any adventures with that. Please, I used to be obsessed thing. with those in 2017. I used, I had like two of them and I used to go hiking and bring them and made little like 360 videos that were so boring because I didn't know what to use it for. Yeah. The, the thing that, that I like about this thing that I ordered, and I may be late to the game on knowing about this, but it's the uh, invisible selfie stick. Oh, cool. You, know, you can put it on a selfie stick, but then in the video, the selfie stick doesn't show. Yeah, that's great. That's because of the stitching of the two lens, of the lenses on either side. Yeah. Right, it's, right. Yeah. Uh, Jer Jeff Jarvis was running around in 2016 during the um, um, vote but it was the election land collaboration that we were doing for the 2016 election with a 360 Samsung camera and setting it on the table in the middle of the newsroom for like the whole time to get a time lapse. They're really fun to play with, especially when you realize that the editing process is the same. Uh, yeah. It's still timeline editing and everything. But actually, you just reminded me of something um, that I and please feel free anybody else to share interesting tools or, uh, you know, gadgets that they like but um i've been really wanting to try um rfid scanning so you can get these little they're super cheap little thin stickers that have rfid chips on them and they're location based they don't connect to the internet it's just a proximity based sensor that you can do things like when you walk into an office or whatever you just tap your phone on it and what you have set up on the phone when it hears it reads that sensor it does something like a, a clock in or if you have smart lights it'll automatically turn on lights um, send an email to this. It triggers an activity similar to like Zapier, but it only does it when you're physically in that place. So you don't have to worry about hacking or, you know, people, random people. And you can just, one of them, one of the people I was talking to uses it to, when he puts his clothes in the wash, he just taps his phone on the side of the, the washer and it automatically sets a 30 minute timer on his phone or, or for, for the track. Like, you know what I mean? Things like that where you're just like, oh shit, that's, that's amazing. I've been meaning to try that. Um, and then the similar one to that is, um, <clears throat> um, SwitchBot, it's like uh, 25 bucks or something like that. I got one for my apartment <clears throat> so that I don't need, uh, we don't have a buzzer for the outdoors. I just press a button on my phone and a little arm in my apartment goes out and presses the buzzer in my, in my apartment. Uh, 25 bucks, Bluetooth, easy to set up. Just one of the coolest little, yeah, I, think, I guess they have a bunch of different types of it, but I just have the little SwitchBot, that guy right there, where'd it go? Why is this carousel? I hate carousels so much. There it is, this guy, the switch bot bot. It is, it's a oh. little box that sticks to the side of the wall and it physically comes out and presses 30 bucks, physically comes out and presses a button. Uh, you can you, it, control it with your voice or the app. It's very, very cool. That is very cool. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else, anyone thing want to share before we wrap? We're at uh, 48 minutes. So I, want, I don't want to take too long, too much longer. Go to subscribe to Wonder Tools. Definitely subscribe to that. Jeremy's great, he's a good writer, knows everything about apps and tools you could possibly imagine. Yeah. Um, I dropped something in there on the calendly.com, which is just oh, an calendly. awesome- calendly. Yeah, that everyone yes, I've uses. Heard, I've heard of that one before. Yeah, that's a good one. I've heard of it more and more lately. It, uh, it's the best service in like the last three years. Yeah. It, yeah, what it does is you can set up your own kind of, it lets, you, it lets people schedule against your calendar, right? Yeah, so they can choose a time that you're available uh, and they right, don't have to right. go back and forth telling, oh, are you available this day? Are you available this day? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. And, and and there's tiers in there, you know, so people with tiers, you can set up different types of appointments for team scheduling. It obviously does a lot, you know, that's a premium, but, you know, I use it all the time and um, everyone I know just puts uh, their Calendly link into their signature. Works I've great. seen it more and more lately. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of strong feelings I, what, about that one. 
one one thing about Calendly, it it works really good on like you know a one to one thing, but yes. where I've run into some frustration with it is is in a team setting, and maybe it's because we're only using the free one. Yeah, is yep. that people only one person can see what is scheduled, and ah, so like okay. if everybody else on the team needs to know what's scheduled, you have to make sure that you let everybody know. So that would be a good case use for use case for something like Zapier, for instance, <clears throat> where if you all you have to do is simply add a, a tag or a code word to the, any calendar invite that comes from Calendly, and Zapier will be able to notice that and then automatically send an email or a calendar invite to anybody else who's listed on that that item. So that's the kind yeah. of like integrations that normally would that, those couple extra seconds or minutes or whatever that you spend sending those damn emails out. Boom, that's done. Boom, that's done. And over the course of months, that that time builds up, saves you, you know, more and more time each week or each whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the team features are really kind of you know the bread and butter to be paid for, Carla, to um to answer, you know, your your right. question. Yeah. Right. But I, I I'm just I'm just passing that along because oh, I, yeah. I have personally run into that frustration being the team member who didn't get to see the calendar <laughs> and yet somehow being expected to know what was on the calendar. So that's, yeah. that's the only thing. Get the email one minute after the hour, right? Hey, where are yeah. you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Um, what do you guys think? Anything else, um, you know, you'd like me to cover anything you want me to do another follow-up session on in more depth, like pick a couple that, you know, maybe stuck out to you that you'd like to explore more Zapier and uh, IFT. If this, then that is always a, a popular one, but if there is anything that you'd like me to do a, a training or a workshop or just an open session like this on, um, well, you, you know, um, what is the one that you show that your professor uses and puts everything and organizes it? You know, oh, like um, yes, that is, let me just bring up my one tab real quick. That is called craft.do, I believe. Craft.do, yes. I got to add that one to the, to the website as well. It's a great one. I feel like a lot of them could be their own in-depth webinar. Like <laughs> I got to get the companies to pay me to do that though. You know? Yeah, I guess probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess I should say I'm not being paid by anyone, but uh, my employer for this, uh, this session, none of these, I don't endorse any of them outside of my use. I don't, oh, you didn't talk about Airtable. Either. Yeah, because Airtable, Separate. I guess Airtable is such a powerhouse. Yeah, I mean, it's it also is super expensive, to be honest. Mm. Um, that's just one that's so out of reach of most people. And even if it weren't, it's so deep and heavy that like Airtable has its own Zapier basically built into it. Uh, so it took it's taken me years and I still have only scratched the surface of how to use Airtable effectively. But luckily, you get a lot of the same functionality as Airtable if you use Zapier as a way to turn a spreadsheet into closer to a database, you know, relational database management kind of a thing. So that's where things like that can augment uh, free tools when you combine them and stuff. But yeah, Airtable is one that phew, I need a training on Airtable. I still feel like I need a training on Airtable. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, all right. Well, I'm going to end the recording. And uh, to those of you watching online, all six of you um, over the course of three years, uh, thank you. And if you'd like to get in touch with me or the center, you can send an email to info at centerforcooperativemedia.org. And we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, I'm going to stop the recording.